My problem with the Abrahamic faith in particular yes. is how it was used as a tool to dominate Africa and still being used. I That's why I came to talk to you specifically. How can you get at this? Look what he says. He says, he says, Islam is the masters. Let me ask you, whoever does the masters without having a bachelor's degree and then you become masters. Personally, I say follow the perspective that makes life easiest for you to live. That's dangerous. The perspective that makes life easier. Jesus said the way to destruction is broad. I agree with that, but what I'm saying is, I used to be a Christian as well. I used to train to be a pastor. A oh, priest. yeah. Wow. So I was born into a, let me give you a bit of background. It'll be easier okay. to have a conversation. Yes. So the question was, how did I live or why did I live? In what way? What made you? Sorry. What made you? What made you leave? Made me leave. Um, so I had gone through a weird phase in life, and I. Uh, No, no, let me. You have to pray me, for yourself. No, no, we don't need your prayer. Can, can I tell you something? No, 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 no. no. You no, have to madam, pray for yourself. No, I, I, I agree. We love. This I'm, is I'm more not, than you. No, wait, more wait. than you. Let me, let me let me say this to you. Let me let me say this to you. If you love Jesus more than me, yes. I ask you, what is his message? His message. Honestly, tell me honestly, what was the message of Jesus? He's a prophet. No, no. Prophet. What did he preach? What did he, he preach? Didn't die. You see, there you why, are. Why you say he died the very death of Jesus, we love Jesus is what brings salvation. But you Moses have been told he didn't why die. The devil is wicked. Know, Madam, I pray for you. you I pray for you. Stop for me. Pray your for eyes will open. Pray for and yourself. you know what? You wake up. Because every day you lie to yourself. Five times a day you are praying that God it's not begotten or can he be begotten? This is what's praying the same way I'm praying today. This is what's praying the same way I'm praying today. No, yeah. it's not a competition. No, it's not. We are not, it's not. competing not. with Islam. But Islam cannot be true. Islam cannot be true. How can you be sure? Because the new, the Old Testament came, the New Testament came, then came the Quran. How can the Quran be true? Just pray for yourself. The Quran, Quran, Quran is when you get your masters. And you get the degree of Jewish, and then you became Christian, and then you are raised to you rise, you rise up to Islam. So when you rise up to Islam, let me let me ask let me ask you let me ask you have Muslims gone through the Old Testament? What do you mean by God? How can you get up? You see, look what he says. He says he says Islam is the masters. Let me ask you, whoever does the masters without having a bachelor's degree and then you become masters? How can you become masters? How? No, but okay, what does it mean? I took from that anyway. Well, what, what does it mean? It meant Islam, and I'm not religious by the way. So yeah, that's okay. Dog that's okay. Yeah, yeah, go on. What I took from what you said was that Islam was a sort of, at the final stop, you start from, um, yeah, today is as, as the base. And so, and so ask him, and ask, ask, ask him, ask him, what does he know about Judaism? What does he know about Christianity? Because if you are a graduate and you're a master's, listen, your master's. master's like a school. No, 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 no. I, 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 okay, my, okay, okay, fine. If that's not what it means, my point is that the master's is talking about is a fake master's. Because. But that's an opinion. I, well, well, I want to show. I know, but I want to share this to you. For example, if you took a case to court, yeah? And the case was presented, you need evidence. Is that right? Correct. Evidence will substantiate your your case yeah. now the old testament has many witnesses the new testament has a many witnesses the quran has no witness the, the, the quran the, con the witnesses are written as well what do you mean they are written listen oh they are written and saying oh i like but, yeah, but, yeah, but you said but you said witnesses okay fine not confirm but let me ask you something mm -hmm. will you believe one witness one person who stands by himself who has a word against a group of people who have the same word who is more credible Somebody who comes and tells us a story all by himself. He tells a story all by himself. And then there's a group of people, they tell the same story, which is similar. But the one person's story is different from the group story. Who do we believe? What exactly are we talking about? About life. About life? Yes. People have different perspectives on life. Yeah, but so, so are we supposed to follow one man's perspective? Personally, I say follow the perspective that makes life easiest for you to live. That's dangerous. The perspective that That's makes life, life easier. Jesus said, the way to destruction is broad. If you want to lose your life, well, do what you like. Do as you please. Enjoy yourself. But if you want to live a circumspect life, 
you have to know the rules of the game because there are rules of engagement and if you discount the rules of engagement it's to your own peril you end up destroying your own self well, hear me out. yes yeah? we're going to have a conversation okay and you know you're not clear on something you need to ask me what i mean when i say certain things I agree. that's how people can understand okay. what we mean when we talk okay when i say live your life that in a way that best works for you i mean yes live your life in a way from my own perspective in a way that best works for you would be in a society like this would be throwing things that would lead to as the most pleasure and the, and the most little pain as possible okay. within a society. Okay. What does that mean? It means following the law, it means doing a tactic. That's what good. can you do to contribute towards making life as easy for you and your brother? That's good. And, as, and creating as little pain as possible. Okay. Okay. I don't believe you need the idea of a God to do that. And that's my problem with religion. Furthermore, my further problem with religion, I believe people have a right to you know, Their own opinions. worship whatever they want to. I agree. My problem with the Abrahamic faith in particular yes. is how it was used as a tool to dominate Africa and still being used. I agree. Which is why I came to talk to you specifically. Okay, I agree with you. Right. Um, I mean, everything you said I agree with. Okay. But then I will have some questions for you. Go for it. Because as a human being, look, okay. I, I'm going to die one day. You're going to die. And I believe that the greatest quest in life is to find out where you will end up when you die. Because, for example, others have been dead. It's been thousands of years. Wherever they are, they're there. And so, let's assume that there is heaven and there is hell. It means, it means some are... No, I'm saying for your sake. I, I'm not assuming, but we can know. You know something? I believe that in our conscience, because our conscience is almost like the voice of God to us. Your conscience tells you what is good and what is bad. A voice in your head doesn't mean that somebody talking. No, no, to you. no, no, no. I'm talking about conscience. What is your conscience? How do you define your conscience? Your conscience is your moral compass. Mm -hmm. How do you the moral compass? Where does that come from? Okay, it comes from what we say to know with. Right. You know, it's almost like comparison of knowledge. You you put one knowledge against the other. You pitch them and you see which is the best. Okay. Yeah. So you put good against evil, because if we're going to argue and just argue for the sake of argument, then somebody will even argue what is good. But I believe that the same way there's a tongue in my mouth, I can taste salt from sugar. Salt is sweet, and salt, and sugar is big, and sugar is sour, salt is sweet. Yeah? So we all have a conscience that kind of gives us a general idea. Basic one is, basic one is, if I don't harm somebody, if I don't do to somebody what I don't want to be done to me, that's, that's a good compass, because nobody wants to be harmed. How do you know that, that knowledge is yes. not from inside your head? Well, the way I will know it's not from my head is because I know the conversation in my head. I can tell, for example, if an, a new idea comes to my head, I can, I can tell immediately that idea is new because I don't normally think that way. Yeah? That is how I recognize. How Come again. You fully know how the mind works. Can you control what you think? Of course you can. No, I doubt that. The Bible teaches, the Bible you, teaches you can. No, even the Bible condemns thinking negatively, like it's a sin. Well, 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 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about negatively. No, but I was, you can't direct your thoughts. You can. No, you cannot. <laughs> See, that is why Jesus that is why Jesus came. Jesus came. Jesus came. Jesus, Jesus came to liberate us in our thought life. Because our thought life is full of darkness. He brought light to help us to gain mastery of our thought life. But our thought life begins on the inside. That means there must be a first change on the inside before there can be change anywhere else. I agree with that, but what I'm saying is, because I used to be a Christian as well. I used to okay. try to be a pastor. A oh. priest. Yeah. Wow. So I was born into, let me give a bit of background. It'll be easier okay. to have this conversation. Yes. I was born into a Catholic family. Yes. And um, used to be heavily religious. I uh, lost my dad and then we switched Sorry to, to hear my that. dad was the uh, the Catholic in the family. That's, okay. that's the point of that story. And then we switched to Pentecostal, the Pentecostal beliefs. Belief of Christianity. Yes. Um, but I was still very much Christian. I used to do evangelism like you're doing. Okay. I, used to, uh, I never caught I never spoke in tongues. I always thought that was weird even as a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I um, but no, I, I had dreams that came to pass. I had, I had different experiences. You know, that whole experience. I know what it's like to be a Christian. So I completely get you when you say certain things. But what, what made you walk away from the Christian? What made me walk away? I walked away when I wanted to learn more about... Um, about I wanted to learn about the history. Of, I wanted to be a, a, a better... Uh, what's the word? A better preacher, so okay. to speak. Were you a oneness Pentecostal? 
One Ness Pentecostal? Yes. I was, um, what is One Ness? Is that like a, another group? I don't know. It was One Ness Pentecostal. What do you mean by that? A Unitarian, a Unitarian. Or Trinitarian, is that the alternative? No, Unitarian, yeah, okay. Unitarian or Trinitarian? Um, Trinitarian. So I believed in, in the Trinity. Okay. And um, the whole King James version thing, you know, yeah. I understand the Unitarians that believe in the oneness of God and the different ideas. But no, I was a uh, Trinitarian. Okay. Um, but I left, the question was, how did I leave or why did I leave? Yeah, in what way? What made you leave? Sorry. What made you leave? What made, you leave? made me leave? Um, so I had gone through a weird phase in life and I, uh, I, there's a funny saying, is it? there's no atheist in foxholes. Yeah. I was in a foxhole and, and I was very religious at that point. And at that point in time, I thought the hardship I was going through was because I thought God wanted to, you know, launch me more into ministry yeah. and stuff like that. So I thought, you know, let me actually learn this thing properly. Because when I would talk to people and they'd ask questions I couldn't answer, I would like dance away mm -hmm. from it. And I wanted to be sure. Um, but then what would happen is I would learn stuff. And I started to see that my ideas didn't really pair with the reality that I was coming to terms with. And... Um, uh, at the same time, I wasn't just like I said. I went to a life. Uh, type of but when you say when you say you are dead, you don't pay up with your reality. How, what, 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 can you explain God, to us for what that means? Um, when I talked to people about evolution, and they told me about evolution, it was I was taught that it was all you know, um, this sort of satanic agenda and yeah. an attempt to you know pollute the word of God and things. There was always this explanation. Um, but then, yeah, when I started to see things like uh, the, 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 the evidence provided for things like natural selection. And yes. So things that are just so clear to you, you get to a sort of mental crossroad where you go, you either follow the truth or you can continue to believe. Can I, can, I, can I ask a question so, Let me finish. Oh, thing. sorry, sorry. I, I, I didn't realize. Yes. Okay. When I talk to religious people that are still there, um, belief is fine, especially where I come from. I mean, you come from as well. You sound down here in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, from West Africa, where people are still going through a lot, I think religion and that faith can be that clutch that can be there when it's dark and there's no there. You know? mm. So I see it, I've been there. But I also feel for that very reason, Africa being the way it is now, I think we have to have a paradigm shift. And this is part of the reason why I'm here. Too. Okay, okay. So I've engaged in those kinds of conversations to let people think. And if at the end of the day you still want to subscribe to the idea of a God, that's fine. But understand that there are harsh reality. There is a harsh reality, and there are consequences for thought processes that lead to actions mm -hmm. that we do. Right. So you look at our governments, and uh, it's it's a, it's a complex topic. It's, it's, yeah. there's, there's economics, social yeah. stuff that plays into it as well, into this whole belief system. Not just Christianity, Islam, and how they've been used as tools to, you know, play with the mind in, in, in demonstrable ways. So as I learn these things, but can I, yeah. let me round it up now. Sorry. Sorry. As I learn these things, I got to a point where. Um, I got to crossroads, I said, I'll go through this whole journey of understanding the history, and if at that point it's true, I'll drop it. Mm. And now I'm a skeptic, okay. and I employ skepticism in everything, not just okay. religion. Okay. You want to give me a vaccine? How many people have had the vaccine before? Mm -hmm. Who's had it in the past? You know, mm -hmm. What's the story behind viruses and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah? Mm -hmm. Get all the data, mm -hmm. remove the emotion from it, mm -hmm. draw a conclusion, mm -hmm. from what, draw a conclusion what would give you the expected answer and act mm -hmm. on that. That's my approach to life. You know? I, really like, I really like your analysis. I think it's, right. it's intelligent. And it's, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm Catholic, but I was at a period when I was going to walk away. I, I didn't in the end, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I understand your, your reasoning. Okay. Yes. Uh, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Oh really? Can, yeah. can I? Can I then ask you a question? Because because you mentioned about evolution. Evolution. Right, yeah. yeah. I, I tell you something. As a Christian, I believe in the process of evolution, okay. not as to creation. Because you mentioned natural selection, okay. yeah, which we can see. I mean, various things have happened. You can tell various creatures and all that stuff. But watch this. Evolution does not explain how creation began. It, 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 it does. I've got the job of evolution. Yeah, but, but doesn't... Okay, part of the one... Part of the father of evolution. Doesn't, doesn't it go back to the Big Bang? No. No. And this is another thing, and I don't mean it's in so, so you're, way. So, so you're saying that there's no connection between evolution and the Big Bang? 
there is another way of describing it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but my, po my point is that there is a connection between yeah. the two of them. If you say there's no connection, that's not true. There's a connection. Okay. Let me explain. Okay, okay. But apart from explaining it, I want to, I want to come back to some of the points you've mentioned because yeah. you were speaking about where you've come from and yeah. where you're at. Yeah. Now, my concern for you, yeah, is that I hear what you're saying. I mean, out of pain, out of suffering, and then having questions. You're even mentioning Africa, what is going on there right now. But I want to say this to you. As pertaining to life, yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. Even in Africa, there are people who are poor and very poor. But even in this society where there's social welfare, there are people who are poor and very poor. Very, very poor. And so, even though it might look as if in this particular society, life is a bit more refined, you know, you get more help, even medical services are more, you know, developed and advanced. Whereas, <laughs> Whereas in Africa, it's yeah. different, yeah? It doesn't take away the central truth of life, yeah? I mentioned to you earlier on about death. And my, my issue is that if we don't face the issue of death and address it, then anybody is living a risky life. My opinion is that if you settle where you're going, it becomes easy to live your life. If I know where, I know where I'm going, so now I can live my life because if I die, I know where I'm going. But before I did, I was kind of halfway in, halfway out. I was living my life, but I kept on asking myself, I'm hearing messages, what will happen when it's over? And I discovered what is, what is over is more important. If I can settle the issue of... of if I, no, that's okay. If I can settle the issue of my destination, I can enjoy the journey. Because any journey where I don't know my destination is a risk. Because it could be anywhere, and actually anything could happen. But if there's an assurance of my destination, then I can really enjoy the journey. If you're on an airplane, Sorry? if you're on a plane and you know the plane's going down, you got a parachute. Yes. Would you take that parachute off because it's riding up your leg and it's breaking your hip, and you don't like the way the parachute fits on you, or would you take it off because you're in that plane that's going down and somebody, the person in front of you, is pushing you, and there's the other one? Would you take the parachute off, knowing that this plane's going down? I'm not a Muslim. The question is, I am not a Muslim. If you're on a plane, the plane's yeah, going down. Sorry, I don't know how you guys do this around this guy. Yeah. Well, Honestly, it's not just him, it's madness here, so... Yeah, you got sorry. a parachute on, yeah. the plane's going down, you take that parachute off. There's something next to you that's made you uncomfortable, you've heard something in the airplane that's made you uncomfortable, would you take that parachute off? I wouldn't, if the plane is going down. No, of course not. Yeah. But you know the plane is going down. Yes, right. now think about it, your life is going to end. How do you know the plane is going down? Because life is going to end. It's not about death. Your life, yeah, your life is going to end. We're all going to end. 99, uh, 10 out of 10 people die. That's yeah. But I'm guessing the analogy. So, so, hold on a second, buddy. So, if you know that the life, your life is going to end and somebody's offering you this parachute, mm -hmm. this parachute of life, is, you know, if you put it on, to safety. when your life ends, yeah. you will be safe. Right. Would, you, would you take that parachute off? Parachute off. You wouldn't. I mean, wouldn't. just told you you wouldn't. Yeah. Now, this parachute, that are, people here are offering you is Jesus Christ. Hey, and I Put it on, believe in him, Jesus Christ, he will save you, he will give you eternal life, because he's promised you, all right? So don't don't take the parachute off, don't think, don't let the people say around you bother you. You yeah. say, no, I got my parachute on, this plane's gonna die, this plane's gonna go down, I got my parachute on. Yeah. People, I think, people I think still, the problem is that people go through traumas in life, and the doubts creep in, this is the problem. Absolutely right, but that's what we were thinking. Don't let these things creep in your head. Yeah. Keep yeah. the parachute on. Yeah. That's what he's saying. No matter what happens, you are being pushed and shoved. You have to keep that parachute on because it's your safety. I, I, I've, gone, I've gone through life, many things in life as well. Put the parachute, whatever happened in my life, whatever keeps happening in my life, whoever attacks me in my life, I call my parachute on. No matter what. No, there's no point to that. The problem with that analogy is when you're in a plane with a, a plane going down, you know from experience and inference that if you don't have a parachute, you will die. The implication is you know where you are going, you need a parachute. The event that's about to happen suggests that without a parachute, you will probably die. Mm -hmm. You don't know this about life. With regards to How come? Let me out. Let me out. Let me, let me answer. You gave me a point. Yeah. What do I mean by that? We know that when a plane is coming down, we know we understand the physics of it. You probably explode and all that stuff. You want to leave that area. Yeah. 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 With yeah. afterlife. So it's okay, 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 any question? The hospital killed, okay, okay. too much smoke. Thank you, too much. Mess the kidney up. They killed the guy. I'm trying to get home four weeks. 
couldn't get him out. It's too late. I told your mum, she'll talk to mum in the ear. I said, mum, mum, wake up while you're talking to her. I love you, Jesus loved it. I loved to hold her hand, couldn't move. Oh, all right. And then she went, why? She called it. She called it. She heard my voice. Yes. Tell me this is started. So it's good. So you were, so you were, so you were there. You, 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 you only saw it. You were there to see her go. Oh. My mum is a rude fly, yes. obviously, you eat my son and green one. Dates birds, a uh, fly shines for Jesus. Wow. And her baby in the Bible, Revelation 21, 1 to 27. Wow. New heaven, new earth. Wow, new heaven, new earth. That was Always the book of life. I wow. saw my name in the book of life in a wow. dream wow. when I was 17. Wow. So we both say, I've got four brothers, they're not safe. Okay. Oh, they're not safe, you're four no. brothers. I told you then. then oh yeah, we're five minutes, but we have to get it. Two pandy seeds. I have to go that way. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm straight. Wow. Cinnabon, so sorry. Since you can't do this. Fake, fake flowers. I put oh, this okay, okay. On, on the cross. Okay, you. you okay. Nice, isn't it? It's very nice, beautiful. Well done. Flowers, God made flowers. Yes. Happy flower. Yeah. God smiling at us. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful. Up, so. Sorry. Been Sorry. Been Sorry. Since 2009, some time. Sit last five years, just about wheelchair. Yeah, struggling, struggling. Wash your hair, everything. Scrub that one out. Okay. Still wish that it's hard, isn't it? Oh, have you got mum? Yeah, no, she's gone. She's gone. Oh, she she's died. gone for a while now. Yeah. She yeah, she said, oh yeah, she, yeah. she brought me to Christ. Oh, oh, yeah. She brought me to Christ. She's yeah. a preacher herself. She did, you preached. See, did you see your mum died? Or no, I, I was, what, what it was, I was being with her when she was sick. And I left her, said I come to London for two weeks, I come back. Yeah. Just when I was going back, then she, she left. Like, yeah, yeah, but no, but it's good. Because I spent about six months with her. Then I to you, Mark, Six months before. Before she goes, talk yeah. to me here. Yeah. 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 She heard me. What, what, what that? Uh, okay. Sorry? For which one? Which one? The, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Nice, nice to meet you. I like what you did. You know, well done, well done. Keep it. See, there you are. Keep doing it, man. Go for it. Yes, I was speaking to this young man who actually had come from a Christian background and uh, various things that happened in his life, and um, you know, someone passed away and so many difficulties. And the difficulties of life made him begin to ask questions. And he has an African background, so he began to look at even how African nations and how they live and what goes on there and all that stuff. And he began to ask himself more questions. And then he said he couldn't match what he believed with what he was experiencing. Now, that's a big one. When your experience doesn't match what you've been taught. And you've got to be careful because when the questions set in, there is a capability to actually begin to question to the place where you question yourself out of what you believe in. But the whole issue is that the light is the light. The truth is the truth. We may stray away from it, it will still be shining. And so long as we can direct ourselves back into the light, we'll find ourselves in the light. And I, I wish for him that actually he would explore more because I mentioned about thoughts and he was like, you can't direct your thoughts. I said, yes, you can. I was trying to get across to him that that is why Jesus came. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it lets you and I know that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away and everything has become new. And so as a new creation, your life begins to change from the inside. God begins to help you to take a hold of your thoughts where you know that in your past life, you had evil, dark thoughts. All of a sudden, with the coming of Jesus, your thoughts begin to change, especially if you stay in God's word and study God's word. The word of God will wash over your thoughts. And actually, it'll be an exchange. I, I like Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. It says, My son, attend to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your heart. Let them not depart from your eyes, but keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. And so, I know that he says right now he's skeptical. He's asking questions. And it's good because at least if you ask questions, then you can look for answers. And I pray for him that he will come to the place of finding his faith once again. And this time, I pray that he will find it with power. Because one of the challenges for many of us is that we were raised in Christian homes. 
but the power aspect was missing. He even mentioned it. He said he never spoke in tongues because he thought it was a bit strange, which I don't, I mean, I understand him. Because if you don't understand how, if you don't understand something, how can you get into it? Except it's explained to you. And actually, if it's explained to you, then you can take a hold of it and actually use it in your life. With any knowledge, if you don't have the full knowledge and you have half of it, it can always come almost hurt you or not help you. But once you have the full knowledge, it will help you. So that was it with him, you know. We concluded, we actually were, we were not able to conclude because I had more questions I wanted to ask him, but I wasn't able to ask him. So hopefully next time we'll continue for where we stop off. But at least he says, right now I'm skeptical. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on. And so if you see him on there, you can pray for him as well. Remember him in your prayers, pray for him. And who knows, you know, God touches us. God might touch his heart and bring him back and he'll, you know, come back and, and enjoy the power. Because I believe in power. For me, following Christ is power. If there is no power, then it's not Christ. I'm telling you, don't just be a Christian. If you're a Christian, there has to be power. There has to be evidence. You have to be able to prove it. If you can't prove your being with Jesus, please, I don't know. For me, Jesus is the power. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.